Hello and welcome to my retro watches. If you're watching this video as it's going out, then Happy New Year to you. I hope that 2021 is certainly going to be better than 2020, which I think for most of us around the entire globe was a catastrophe. So all the best for 2021 and I hope it brings you good luck and fortune. So with that out of the way, this video is just going to be a bit of a sneak peek of what I've got in store or what I plan to have in store for this year. I've got plenty of watches um, all accumulated ready for the channel. So I'm going to go through those a little bit, um, have a look at them, and then perhaps you can leave some comments at the end uh, below to see which ones might be your favourites, which ones you might want to be done first. And uh, it's just going to make for an interesting video, isn't it? So stick around. I'm going to go to the bench and we'll start going through all the watches I've acquired for the channel. Okay, in front of you are the watches that I've accumulated over the last 12 months. Uh, some of these are uh, my own personal uh, restoration watches. Others have either been donated for the channel to a service and video, and one or two are actually paid jobs as well. So I'm going to go through them in no real particular order except for the first one, because the first one is this one. And this most likely will be my next video. So this is a Seiko Matic. So it's an early, it's a 1966. And I forget the movement, it's an 8306. I've never done one of those before. And this watch belongs to Elliot from a, a YouTube channel called The Retro Future. And Elliot does some really cool videos on old uh, game, uh, game Boys and just things like that and he can restore those things and get them working again. Quite an interesting channel. And of course, he's a great big watch buff as it turns out. So he asked if I could service this one for him and I figured why not film it as well. So I'm looking forward to that one uh, just because it's a, a, a 60s Seiko and I haven't been into too many of those. So it should be fun. There are plenty of Seikos on the bench, I'm afraid. I can't really uh, soothe my addiction on those <laughs> too much. But there we go. So we'll take this one, for instance. Here's another Seiko. Some of you will have seen this already. This is the Seiko Skyline that I've got. And we use this along with this Accurist and the Bullova that I've recently done the video on. And it was a multiple choice. Which one did you want to see first? And of course, you chose the Bullova. Well, I promise that I'll still look at these at some point. And hence, they're in the collection now. So this one, uh, as you can see, it's very patinaed on the dial. The second hand moves every time I move the watch. And I'm not going to show you the movement on that at the moment because it's a bit of a pig to open. Uh, but I do also have a donor that I can take the stem and crown from because it's missing on this. So it's a tiny little watch, um, but it should be a lot of fun at the same time. Uh, so we've got this one. This is a glycine. And this actually was a gift to me from a guy called Michael Kerr. He's a fan of the channel and he recently gave me a watch and asked me to fix it. It was his late father's and I duly obliged and he was that happy with what I did. He actually gave me this watch, which is fantastic. It is in full working condition. It will run perfectly fine. Um, it just will require a service. So why not bring that to the channel as a thanks to Mike as well? And here we have the, the movement. I can't tell you off the top of my head what movement is in there without removing the balance. But needless to say, it looks like your usual uh, Swiss hand wind movement. But it's got some nice finish in there, as you can see on the bridge. So I will look forward to doing that. Uh, while we're talking Seikos again, let's talk about this one, because this is the famous Seiko Bullhead. And I've been waiting or been wanting to get one of these for a long time, but they are quite expensive and um, a bit beyond my reach. Yet at the same time, as a Seiko fan, I think all Seiko fans have got to own one of these. And I was able to get a hold of this from a friend of mine called Quan, who's actually helped me out before on the channel. And he gave me an unbelievable deal for this. And uh, OK, it needs a lot of work. It needs a service. We're missing a hand. I'll need to source a new um, bezel. This bezel is actually worn down here, which is incredible. I don't know how that would have happened. And of course, the case is quite uh, battered and bruised, as you would expect, really, I suppose, for a watch of this age and this size, because they are huge. 
Um, but I'm really, really looking forward to getting my teeth stuck into that. This will probably be over a number of videos because it's going to be quite a difficult challenge, I think. I've never done a two register chronograph uh, before. Um, so trying to do that <laughs> as a first uh, while filming is going to prove to be a bit of fun. But I also want to do some case restoration on it as well. So that might be over a series of videos. We'll have to see mainly because it's the personal grail and it's a watch that I really want to put a lot of time into. If you'd watched my um, Seiko Pogue video, then I want to do this in the same sort of uh, finish as I did that. So what else have we got? We've got some uh, interesting names here. So we have got a Zenith. Now, sadly, this isn't my watch. I kind of wish it was because it's right up my street. Uh, this Zenith uh, is an interesting one. It is sort of stuck as you can see the crown doesn't matter what position it's in will only operate the hands i can't check the day or the date and it is not working either partly i guess because i can't wind it up so something's gone wrong in the keyless in there it's got a lovely uh, textured dial but there is a bit of patina you can see hopefully in the light there there's some sort of spots um, i'm thinking this movement might be quite challenging for me Again, a lot of these that you can see on the desk are things that I've never done before. Um, so I, I'm, <laughs> I'm building a rod from my own back here because uh, trying to, again, film anything that you've never worked on before is going to be quite challenging. But I kind of like the idea. This looks like an incredible movement. Lots of detail, a lot of decoration. And um, I will be nervous. Don't get me wrong when I come to do this one. But it'd be really good if I can get it going and get it fixed. So that's the Zenith. We have here a pair of citizens. So we've got a, um, I think that says seven, seven star and a crystal seven. I don't know anything about these particularly other than they are nice. They look very 70s. They've got this sort of cushion type case. They're in fairly good condition. This one's missing its uh, stem and crown, which could prove to be a uh, quite difficult to find. I do like the the day and the date uh, features in separate windows there. But then I like this one as well also because it's a black dial. And uh, I like the uh, the track around there, the seconds track. I think both have a very similar movement and I've not really worked on, again, too many citizens. Just try and take the uh, back off there. We can have a quick look. I'm just saying that 30 joules. So that this this one's definitely got to be done, hasn't it, for 30 joules? I, I love these really high joule movements because usually the joules are in ridiculous places uh, and not really doing anything functional. So that, again, I'll be looking forward to doing that one. Uh, on the Swiss, we have this. This is lovely. Unfortunately, again, this is not mine. HY Moser or Moiser. I'm not sure how we pronounce that. This is a beautiful, beautiful watch, and it only runs, as you can see, for just a few seconds. Uh, I love the way the crown is integrated into the case there. It really is nice, but you can wind this up, and it just doesn't really do much at all. There we go, it's trying to run again. Now, my look, it'll now run continuously because it <laughs> tends to stop. And let's have a look at the movement in here because this is absolutely beautiful. Just look at that. Uh, again, I think it's, uh, well, I don't know what it is. I'm trying to read that motif, but from the distance I am, I can't tell. But any of these sort of brass colored or gold colored movements really catch my eye. I love them. And many rays, it's such a shame that these are always hidden underneath the case backs because you'd love to have a, a clear case back on some of these watches purely to admire the craftsmanship uh, I think they're like little bits of art, to be honest with you. So I'm just trying to move away some of the ones that we haven't looked at. Uh, the ones that we have looked at, sorry. Um, this one, nice and honest. Uh, a little seconder. So I did a Russian watch uh, earlier in 2020, and I quite enjoyed it. And I've not explored any more from that continent. And this one came in a job lot somewhere, I can't recall how I've got hold of it, to be honest with you. But it's an 18 joule, 
Uh, it does try to run again, this one, uh, although it's not running at the moment. And it's nothing, you know, it's a very classic sort of looking watch. And uh, let's have a look inside there. So again, pretty much the same sort of uh, movement as all the others, but should be a bit of fun. Very, very affordable. And why not bring affordable watches to the channel? Watch uh, enjoyment of watches is not all about all the big brands and, and the famous names and all the, all the fancy movements. I can get just as much pleasure out of a five pound watch, to be honest with you, as I can. In, in some respects, working on the, the cheaper ones is, a, is less nerve wracking because it doesn't cost you much and if things break or you need parts it's not too uh, eye-wateringly expensive this one though this is one of my favorites on the bench now you will, may wonder why it doesn't look anything special it's a, a severetti if i can pronounce that correctly and it's got a wind a screw down crown sorry that's interesting to see that on a watch like this with this coin uh, edge bezel and Obviously the hands move, the date doesn't. I mean, that's the strange thing. It'll move there, but I cannot quick set the date. It's all very peculiar. It winds quite nicely. And as you can see, it's running really nicely. I think it's quite a high beat movement too, but it's a wolf in sheep's clothing because it doesn't look anything special there at all. We take the case back off this. If I can take the case back off this. Look at that. Now, to me, this is absolutely beautiful. I'm not sure if it's an ETA. Again, I can't see from where I am. Or whether this is their own brand even. Who knows? But I am going to really enjoy taking this one apart, servicing it, putting it back together again, uh, put a new glass on it and see if we can't fix the uh, date issue there. But my word just for that alone <laughs> i think i've got a th i've got a thing for things uh, gold colored so we then have this uh, this was sent to me uh, as part of some of these actually there's a, there's quite a few of these from one particular person who's just sent them for the benefit of filming for the channel if i can fix them great if i break them there's no uh, come back on me at all it's just purely for the experience now under this that you can't really see is a doxa i've never worked on a doxa this looks extremely old as you can see there's a date there and i'm just trying to get it in the right light is that 1940 is it 41 40 so this is proper old stuff uh, but again i am looking forward to it and we can just sort of, it sort of opens up like this. I don't want to touch it too much. We have that little movement in there. The whole thing comes out. I've got it upside down typically. And I don't want to touch that dial particularly if I can help it. But look at that. That's a beaut, isn't it, really? Very small movement. And I'm going to have fun with small movements. I've not really worked on a lot. And how I'm going to film small movements is another matter entirely because um, it just makes things a lot worse. But there we go. That is stunning. I better put that somewhere safe. The crystal, I don't know what's happened there. It feels acrylic. So hopefully we can just polish that up and bring that back to life. Okay, big ticket item. We've got an Omega Seamaster and this thing is lovely. Look at that. Look at the the indices. Now they're raised. Really, really, really nice watch. Very, very nice watch. And not a lot wrong with it, to be honest with you. It seems to run, although I haven't really timed it. Um, it's going to need a service. And that's why it's here, so that I can have a go. I haven't done too many. I've only done two Seiko. Uh, Seiko. <laughs> I've only done two Omega automatic watches uh, ever. And neither of those have been on, on camera. I enjoyed working on them greatly. Some needed parts, which were a problem because getting hold of parts for Swiss watches is difficult right now. And this one is a 752 movement. Really, really nice looking thing. And again, hopefully 
I can do this justice and get it going properly and uh, it can be brought back into into use because that's where it deserves to be that's going to look very nice on somebody's wrist that is sadly though this one isn't my watch either so we've only got a few left here um surprise surprise we have another seiko i've had this one for ages sorry the light is catching a bit here this is a brown dial uh, Lord Matic, classic uh, Lord Matic Seiko. Uh, it's the 5606 movement, I think. Yes, there we go. And believe it or not, I've never serviced a Lord Matic yet. I know they can be quite tricky. There's a few little springs in there I've got to watch out for. And this one appears to have where the uh, day date or the quick change doesn't work, which is usually a problem with a little plastic gear in there that might have broken. Hard to say. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, that's definitely got to be filmed at some point, and I'd like to try and do a bit of casework on there as well and try and get that back to some really good looking watch. I like these sort of TV shape watches, and that will fit just nicely in my collection. I must have owned it for probably a year already, just never got round to uh, working on it. Um, the Accurist. So, do I ever bring the Accurist to? to the channel given what you've seen so far difficult to say this accurist some of you will have seen it in the um the i'm trying to think what it is now the community tab on my channel uh, equally on facebook and on instagram um the dial is had it really on this one it's seen a lot of better days uh, there's a lot of patina going on and the case is really poor most of the gold platings come off and it's just showing the brass but it has got inside really nice looking ETA movement and here we go again just for the for the sheer sake of cleaning that and making that look nice again and running wouldn't that be delightful I just love working on these sort of things and uh, that could make an interesting project albeit once it's running and back in here again maybe it doesn't do it the justice that it will deserve perhaps who knows i could find another accurist watch with the whether i could use the movement and have a better dial in case who knows so we're down to the last few we'll start with this one uh, this unfortunately is not my my watch but in many respects should be because it's right up my street i've not heard of this brand i'm trying to get in the right Pirofa, if I'm saying that right. Uh, it's got that sort of Royal Oak look about it, hasn't it? That sort of shape. Um, but it's really nice that this bracelet's finished lovely with the little chamfers on the edge. It just feels nice in the hand. The dial is textured. You can kind of see that there, sort of raised up. The gold indices, I love the actual second hand. You can see I can wind this and it runs. So I'm not too sure what is wrong with it particularly, other than it'll just need a service for the sake of having a service. But it is really, really nice looking watch. Actually came in its original box. And in the box, we have some paperwork. Which is the uh, certificate of guarantee on the 7th of July, 1978. So nice decade for me. 70s watches are my favourites. I haven't loosened the back on this one to see what's in it, so we'll keep that one for now as a surprise. This is just a little bit of a curveball. It was sent for a bit of fun. I'm not sure whether I can work on it or not, to be honest with you. It is mechanical. You can hear it can wind. Uh, it's very plastic. And... Um, but doesn't it look cool? I love these uh, hour and minute hands. They're really interesting. The hands are dead small, but the bit in the middle is really big. I mean, how I remove those, uh, I just don't know, to be honest with you. Uh, it should be quite fun. So I may bring this to the channel. It might be just something that I fix off camera. Who knows? And then we're left with two. We have this nice... Uh, avia watch uh, i do like this one i bought this one fairly recently on ebay for myself to have a play with 
I love this. Is it Baroque style? I can't quite recall. Very minimalist. You know, there's no edge of the case, so to speak. It's all about the dial. Uh, I like the font that they've used. Uh, I like everything about this watch, actually. It's really nice. It's missing its crown. Uh, I've already taken the case back off. And we have the usual sort of um, Swiss movement again, yeah, albeit ever so slightly differently laid out. But it'd be nice to get this one going. I don't know whether it goes or not because it's, uh, like I say, it's missing that crown, so I've not been able to wind it and find out. And the last one is a Titus. Classic looking, again. Uh, what more can we say? I don't know much again about Titus either, but what I do like is what's inside this one as well. And we have another really nice looking gold movement. I was just trying to see if I could see a maker's mark by the balance, but I can't really see anything there. So again, this one's going to be a lot of fun. They just don't make the movements like that, or perhaps they do. I don't know. I only have a sort of dabble in these old watches. So it's a classic looking thing, the champagne dial. But wow, what's inside? It's nice, nice little case back actually as well. So there we go. That is all of the watches that I've got. I have got this little curveball actually, which I'll show you now for the sake of it. Uh, this is a very old ladies Seiko. Look at this. I'd love to film this because it doesn't work. I'd like to get it going, uh, but it is just so small that I can't see how this would be viable to uh, bring to the channel in all fairness. But look at that, it's incredible, isn't it? I mean, I find ladies' watches fantastic, really. They don't, they don't cost anything. My wife doesn't like secondhand or these old vintage watches at all. She'd have no interest in this one if it was running, I wouldn't have thought. Um, and that's why they, they don't have any value. But then you think of all the engineering. So the engineering into a gentleman's watch, and we think they're small, and then it's even smaller for these, yet they still would run and keep perfect time. It's incredible, really, and it's a real sad uh, reality that they don't fetch as much money as perhaps they should. So I don't know on this one whether it would make the channel. I think just filming it would be really, really difficult for a start. But there we have it. So that's what I've got going on this year or plan to have this year. Tell me your thoughts. Leave your comments below. Which one's your favourite? Which ones you think I should do first? Uh, which ones shouldn't I do, perhaps? Um, who knows? We've got a lot to get through and it normally takes me two or three weeks to do a video, depending on what's going on in my, my personal and, and my professional life. Don't forget, this is just a pure hobby for me. And a lot of these movements I've never uh, been in before. So all present lots of challenges. It proves to be hopefully quite entertaining, especially if I make the usual mistakes, uh, but equally if I can get them up and running. So like I say, leave the comments below. I will read them. I will uh, hopefully react to as many as I can and potentially on your suggestions of which ones to do first. We may venture down that road as well. So Happy New Year. Hope that 2021 is better than uh, the 2020, which I think it will be for most. And I will see you very soon, presumably when we start to film this one. Bye for now.